Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in for a very special edition of our Pro Talk webinar. We're here with a panel of expert pros uh, to discuss industry trends. We're going to ask them a few questions in regards to this and in regards to best practices with their business and with Home Advisor. I'm also here with my colleague, Mike Meyer. My name is John Trout. We're both on the national sales team here at Home Advisor. Uh, our first panelist is coming uh, to us from Rochester, New York. Uh, his name is Paul Melnick of Roofing Rochester NY. Uh, Paul, can you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? Paul, looks like you're on mute there. There you go. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, um, nice to see you, John, again. Uh, this is uh, Paul uh, from Roofing Rochester, and uh, glad to be here. Thanks for the invite. Uh, really excited about what we're going to hear today. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. And uh, next, we have Chris Hove of Matrix Bath Solutions. He is the Chief Marketing Officer over there. Uh, Chris, uh, you want to take it away? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris. Um, as John mentioned, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer with uh, Matrix Home Solutions. Uh, we're the 47th largest uh, Residential, residential remodeling company um, in the U.S. Um, I'm happy to be here, and, and I hope I can share some wisdom that I maybe have. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. And we're going to pass it over to Dawn over at DreamStyle. Dawn, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the group? Sure. Uh, thanks for having us, John. I'm the Senior VP of Marketing and Business Development for DreamStyle Remodeling. We operate in six Western states. Uh, I think we're number 13 on the top 500 remodeling list. So excited to share ideas today and uh, tips and tricks for working with Home Advisor. Awesome. Thanks, Don. We appreciate that. And last but not least, we have another marketing expert here for you. We have the Director of Marketing from Trium, Seda. Uh, would you want to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Seda. I'm uh, the Director of Marketing at Trium Home Remodeling Company. We're based out of California, servicing about 75% of California. We are number 30 in the Qualified Remodelers. We've been uh, on the list for eight consecutive years. And thank you, John, for the opportunity and for allowing me to be a part of this amazing panel. Awesome, and thank you for being here. I think we should jump right into it, guys. Uh, I'm going to start off with Chris. Chris, can you talk about uh, the last year and the way things have changed in the regards to the way you reach out to leads, uh, especially the way you interact with your customer? Uh, I know COVID has changed in the way we're interacting with people online and just our customers in general. How has it affected you and uh, your business within this industry? So... I guess um, I always feel ashamed to say this, but COVID has been um, very good to this industry. Um, we've had a, a record 12 months um, since COVID started. And it, it is due in large part to shifting strategies a little bit. Um, we went virtual for a little while um, you know, and found that we could actually work in that, um, in that method. We, we couldn't work as well, but we were able to kind of get through the first 60 days and, and still um, keep our heads above water. After that, what it's become, it's become difficult to compete for people's attention. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff going on and people are a little bit worn out from being in front of their, it seems like their electronics. And so we weren't getting as much response to some of our traditional um, drip campaigns. So we refreshed those a little bit. Um, we, we alternated the hours or changed the hours up that we were delivering some of our drip messaging um, because people were, people were tending to have a an expanded work day um, when they were working from home, so they were engaged in other things. We, again, we just changed some of the delivery times for our drip campaigns. Um, probably the most important thing that we've had to do is we've started doing more dialing during um, traditional work hours, and we're finding that we get better contact during those times than we have historically. Um, and then we're being really cautious about scheduling daytime appointments. Um, when we're looking to have all decision makers home, um, everybody's home but that doesn't mean that they're willing to pay attention. And so we've been really cautious about asking people, all right, great, so you're both gonna be there, uh, or one of you working from home, but, you know, this at a time where we can have you guys sit down and actually talk to us a little bit about the uh, product services and options that we're gonna show you. So we've had to be really careful about that in order to just get the, make sure that we have a, 
all decision makers to point that um, where they're actually capable of, of working with us. So, but I think those are the big changes that we've seen and, and some of the big, bigger shifts that we've made. Awesome, Chris, that was really insightful. Uh, just to kind of reflect on some of the things you said, dialing during those more opportune times, so much more important, so, so very important. And we're also seeing that uh, customers are valuing, um, you know, the time that they book this appointment and they are going with contractors that are gonna accommodate them. Uh, and we are expecting things instant as, as consumers. So uh, having the quality of the appointment, like you said, and, and ramping up the dial during the times when we know people are home, great points. Uh, Mike, uh, go ahead and take it away from here. Yeah, so Paul, we wanted to talk to you about as the economy starts to reopen, what are some of the key changes that small businesses are gonna to need to make to uh, continue uh, succeeding and growing? Thank you for the question, um, Mike. So uh, I wanted to mention a couple of things uh, to this point. Uh, first of all, I think that the economy reopening, which all business owners, including myself, uh, are very anxious about. We see the vaccine getting uh, unveiled and a lot of people starting to get it. Um, there are rumors that there are shortages in places and you know um, other rumors that at this pace we're going to have to get uh, we're going to have to take about a year from now to have herd immunity, uh, like at about 75%. So from my point of view, I figured that even though I'm, you know, very excited that, you know, the promise is there by, you know, politicians and community leaders that we're going to get back to normal really fast, but I'm being very cautious because I think it's going to be a lot slower reopening uh, than a lot of us anticipate. So... In that spirit, um, like what I've done for my businesses, I've been very um, uh, careful in how we spend our money to make sure that we're doing things that are not going to, you know, backfire on us. We as business owners, we like to take a lot of risks. Um, I think that's one of the key ways to be an entrepreneur. And uh, because most people, you know, don't have the stomach for it. But um, you know, with those risks, sometimes, you know, there's great rewards, but sometimes there's catastrophic uh, circumstances, circumstances that can arise from those risks. And uh, I think a lot of us have seen the businesses that have closed down uh, during the pandemic because they weren't ready to weather a storm. And I'm just thinking that we all have to be very careful how we move forward uh, to make sure that we're not um, overspending, over um, uh, budgeting and different things that are not going to be beneficial for us. Um, so uh, something that, you know, kind of transformed our business was there's a book that I read uh, profit first and it kind of, its point was like, Hey, put away money into a separate account that um, you're not going to be touching. Um, and you're going to be able to use it for the emergency fund to make sure you have a good, bumper there. I mean, with the bigger companies, I'm sure that they already incorporate that. With smaller office like mine, I know that, you know, we see the money in the account and we're spending on this and this and this, and we're not being very careful. So I think that uh, those couple things are um, going to have to be uh, paid attention to. Um, and, you know, people are going to have to be very careful. Um, another thing that, um, I would like to say is in this reopening process, we, we have to use uh, every form available to us to acquire new customers. Um, there's a lot of different marketing formulas and, and things that we all do. Um, I think that, you know, having the canvas teams and the customer in the, in the companies that don't have them building those kind of things out that are going to be able to generate the new clientele and generate new business for you. Um, you know, being very serious and, you know, investing a lot into the aspect is going to be crucial for companies to be able to survive and, you know, go along with this reopening and, and, and you know, weather the storm, like I said. Um, we really appreciate Home Advisor and, you know, what they do, uh, the marketing, the, the amount of people that they can get us in front of. And every single marketing strategy every single lead that we go on we try to make sure that's 110 percent um 
Make sure that you're doing something that nobody else is doing in those appointments. Make sure that every single step of the way, every sales guy, every single meeting is going to be top notch. Then nobody's dropping the ball. Make sure you're constantly auditing every step of the uh, process, whether it's from the secretary answering the call, that she doesn't sound lethargic talking to people, that she's excited. She wants to hear these people. Um, she wants to hear their problems. She's the counselor there. Um, and then going into the, you know, the multiple uh, points of contact before you even meet with the customer uh, on a, with a salesperson. Make sure that those people feel like you're, you're going there and you're their second cousin, you know, because I think the most successful uh, sales meetings that you're going to have is the ones that people feel like they talk to you and they know you already. Uh, make sure that you, they already feel like they, you know, heard about you and everything that is um, about you. Um, I feel like there has to be a, a serious push in that direction. Um, because most of us, like if we think about how, how many times we talk with our even close relatives, you know, I think I saw my sister last time, three months ago. I, I think I got one call in that period, you know, and if we contact them 10 times in a week from different points, I think that's going to do a big difference for us when we're sitting with them because we talk to them more than they talk to their, you know, closest relatives. So they're going to feel like they're very close to us at that point. Um, Something else, you know, going along with this point of, you know, a slower reopening. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of other things that we're going to see that we can't foresee right now. And, you know, if it is going to be really slow and if the economy isn't going to be that crazy, something that reassures me is something I read in a, in a book a while ago. And it was a story about the Great Depression when there were a lot of businesses that they were going into this, you know, great depression period and they started shutting down offices. They started laying people off and they started downsizing. They started doing a lot less work. And then there were certain companies that they had a different itch. They said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to work two times harder. Everyone that was on this boat is going to pedal two times harder. You know what happened? Those companies doubled in size during the great depression. And that's something that I want to pass on to you as new business owners or existing business owners that are not sure about what's going to go and what's going to happen. Business is like planting a seed. If you plant the seed and you're going to give it water, you're going to give it sunlight, that seed is going to produce fruit. And business is just like that. So if you do what was successful in the Great Depression, I don't think we're going to be in a Great Depression type of economy in the next 12 months. But I feel like you're going to expand your business. You're going to grow at a crazy rate and you're going to do really good for you and your business. So don't lose heart. If you see the news and you see, you know, Bitcoin crashing, um, just do what you have to do. Don't let that cloud your judgment and cloud your passion for what you have built with your sweat and tears and where you've gotten that business. Um, I think that, uh, I think I might add one more thing to that if I still have a minute. Um, the profiles on like all your different uh, social media and all your platforms, make sure that's 100%. Don't let people go on your website and find links that don't work. Uh, it's gonna be a waste of time. It's gonna show illegitimacy to your business and you can't afford to do that right now. So that's it. That's awesome, Paul, good stuff. Yeah. Great, great points, Paul, uh, especially about reputation. Something that we're seeing with homeowners being home more, they're reading reviews and they're more researched now. So reputation, and it's not just immediacy anymore. It's also about the quality of the contractor. So you have a lot more time to read up, not only on reviews, not only on the reputation, make sure all that is all legit, but also on your knowledge of the products and the stuff that you're doing. I mean, these people, I could hire them to put on roofs sometimes. It seems like that to me, you know? It's mind blowing what we're seeing out there. I think that's a very good point, John. Awesome. And Don, I wanna see if you could just piggyback off that um, and just talk about any advice from, from the marketing perspective um, as far as key changes uh, uh, in small businesses that, that they would need to do to grow and things that you have maybe done in the past year to, to maintain your growth, specifically on your own and with Home Advisor. Sure, yeah, you know, I would, add that the online reviews are just of imperative importance. You have to be focused on 
uh, inspiring your happy customers to take the time to go online and share their experience because you know anyone that you get sideways with is going to. And so people who are unhappy, I think I've seen some stats, someone who's unhappy is like 10 times more likely to go online because they have a vendetta, right? They have a point to prove. But if they're really happy with you and you don't push or ask them to share their experience by posting a review, they're going to be happy with you and go on with their life. So it's really important to ask for the review. Um, we have a program where we, you know, motivate our installers. You know, the installers are the ones that your customer is going to be building the most rapport with. They're the ones that are at their house for two days at a time. They build a relationship with them. So the installer builds a relationship. Have them at the end of the project when they do a checkout and finish their installation. Go through, make sure the homeowner is happy, show them how everything operates, and then mention, you know, we'd really appreciate it if, if you're happy, if you're satisfied, take the time to post an online review. So I uh, just wanted to add how important that is. Uh, we have benchmarks. We're highly, highly focused on helping our happy customers to take the time to share their experience online. Um, crazy year. Uh, you know, I think it started out in, in March when our first market got shut down. Panic. We didn't know what we were going to do. Uh, I started pulling media and then two days later realized we were classified as an essential business and put all the media back. And so I think all of us kind of had a period of time where no one really knew what was going to happen. And then most of us in the home improvement industry were able to kind of get our heads on straight and figure out how to operate in this environment. Um, and, and since then, you know, we've been able to really catapult and had a tremendous 2020 with terrific growth. Uh, and Home Advisor was a big part of that. We started back up with Home Advisor in May, and uh, Home Advisor was really able to provide us with like stability and security in our lead generation funnel because we kind of know we can rely on Home Advisor to bring in the volume. You, you know, the reps are so helpful, they're knowledgeable, they'll give us accurate projections of what we can expect. And so from May through December, I wrote down here, we issued 3,000 appointments from Home Advisor with a price of 13% of our overall leads issued during that period. That's a huge mix for us to have one source take up 13%. So Home Advisor is a really important partner for us and just really grateful for what you guys do. Um, in terms of small businesses figuring out how to operate, I think the biggest shift that we had was getting way more real time in our lead management forecasting and, and marketing. So instead, you know, Prior to COVID, we were focused on, we would forecast out next month, next quarter for the whole year, how many leads are we going to issue per market, per product, you know, next month and the month after that. But what we weren't focused on, this is a huge miss, huge change for us, is how many leads are we going to issue tomorrow? And so that's been a gigantic shift. We'll never go back. It's really helped to catapult our growth. We're focusing on tomorrow and next month at the same time. And you have to be looking at how many leads you're getting out the door tomorrow and making real-time adjustments um, to your marketing mix and your spend and your forecasting just to make sure that you're kind of hitting right now with the unpredictability and then also kind of maintaining your, your monthly planning um, that you should be doing if you're executing a, a real marketing mix. I'm sure I could go on, but let yeah, me know. No, you're, you're bringing up some great points. Uh, so the, the first thing that you mentioned that I think was great that actually slipped my mind, I'm really glad you brought it up, is asking for, asking for the review. And um, at that point of the relationship when the project is done, uh, you guys should already have that relationship where, where you are comfortable. Um, and to, to, to add on that, I want to ask Seda if, if you have any processes for that and uh, talk about your overall marketing strategy and, and what you've done and how it has shifted within the past year. Um, sure. Um, so marketing is very different if, you know, month over month it changes. And, um, you know, since, you know, we're also very heavily focused on uh, digital marketing, it changes so fast. Uh, and we have to learn and adapt as fast as possible. Um, reviews has been a huge uh, part of our success. We started focusing on reviews since 2013 when, you know, Yelp got introduced to our industry. Google was, you know, coming up with the reviews. Um, people, you know, reviews was there. It's just for the home, home improvement and the remodeling industry. It wasn't as, as popular, you know. People, if they needed recommendations, you know, we had a list of, uh, like, referral lists that we would give to clients and they would call our past customers. So we no longer do that because when people uh, want to get recommendations, 
recommendations, they simply, you know, Google our name, uh, go to a, any review platform, and they can even message people that posted a review or a comment about our business. Um, so reviews has been key, which is why um, we've always focused on customer experience, um, making sure that we give clients a great experience when from the second day, uh, they connect with us. If, if, if they call, if they pick up the phone or call us, fill up a form and, you know, we have a representative reaching out to them. So um, the whole customer journey, we're really focused, we've been focusing on our entire customer journey, but through COVID time, we really, really had to, you know, make sure like we do a much better job. So from the way we answer the phones, from, you know, from our meetings, from all the way till when we finish the job, when we complete the job, um, we will, of course, ask the homeowner to post a review. Um, oftentimes, we'll reach out to them, ask them, how was your overall experience with our company? Um, and of course, they'll give us feedback and uh, we'll send them a link and they'll post those reviews. We obviously don't want to force clients to post the reviews. We want to make sure that all of these reviews are genuine and people w willingly want to post them. And oftentimes they do. Uh, and uh, with COVID, people are home and uh, they're able to spend a little bit more time to give you a detailed review. Some of them even take pictures, um, post it with the review, which adds a lot of value um, to our overall marketing mix. Because especially in the digital word, world, um, you, positive reviews, if you don't have positive reviews, your ads are not going to perform um, the way you want to and you're not going to get the ROI that you're looking for. Um, so the way we shifted our marketing um, right when COVID, COVID hit, um, the first 10 days we, you know, we're like, okay, what's going on? Uh, people were in, a sh were in shock. Uh, so the first kind of like from March, I believe it was the 20th for California, we had to like pause everything what we do, what we were doing, and okay, starting Monday, we're working from home. So it took us about like a week, 10 days for everybody to get situated, for everybody, you know, to become okay and get used to the new norm. Um, so after 10 days, we're like, oh, we decided that we're going back again uh, with advertisement. Um, we, you know, even lowered some of our lead volume with Home Advisor at the time, but then um, starting April, we went back again. Uh, we've really focused on uh, creating a lot of content um, for people to uh, educate themselves. Uh, so on YouTube, on our social media platforms, um, that's one of the main things that's helped us drive a lot of traffic to our site. Um, we constantly post testimonials. We do project walkthroughs uh, where when we finish the jobs, our project managers will um, talk about the details of the project um, and uh, through marketing channels, platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, we drive traffic to our site. Um, and create, you know, traffic to our website has been one of the main, uh, one of my main focuses is because we are producing a lot of great content and we want to make sure that we drive traffic to it. So when people see it, um, they can relate to the kitchen or the bathroom or the backyard or the front yard remodel that they want to do. Us as an organization, we are not a single trend company. Um, we pretty much take care of everything around the house. Uh, you know, for us, is just a house is a house. Um, but at the same time, you know, you want to make sure that you specialize in what you do, uh, which is why we've created, we have three divisions within Trium. Uh, one of them is design and build, where we focus on kitchens, bathrooms, room additions, structural changes, mainly into inside work. Uh, we also have outdoor living. We specialize in out with the outdoor space, which is the you know the driveways, the backyards, um, and uh, with the energy uh, department uh, division focuses on uh, you know making providing homeowners and energy solutions to reduce their utility bills and make the home more healthier and energy efficient. Um, so with all these different products that we're offering, we try to educate our homeowners um, through social media platforms. And that's, one of, that's been one of our um, driving um, sources for traffic to our site and for people to uh, pick up the phone and give us a call. Um, and also just, not just the traffic, we want to make sure that people engage with us on social platforms, um, such as Nextdoor. 
uh, that's a platform that's growing where people are looking for um, contractors. Uh, people just go ask for recommendations. That's something that we've also been, you know, making sure that clients post recommendations, just like reviews on Nextdoor, just recommending our business where their neighbors get to see and uh, read about the experience that their neighbor had. Um, but overall, you know, Home Advisor has been a part of our success. We've been with you guys uh, for over 10 years back in, you know, when you guys were called Service Magic. And we are, um, you know, going to continue with you guys and because, you know, you guys are consistent um, and you guys do contribute to um, the lead flow and the volume that we're looking for. And you guys are able to give us forecasts for the next day, for the next month. Um, so that's pretty much what, you know, um, our 2020 looked like. Awesome, Sita. I think that's, uh, you touched on a bunch of important things, but the, the one thing that really stuck out in my mind is how you were able to adapt to uh, the way things are moving and just trends in the industry. You mentioned you were calling referrals previously, and now you understand the importance of reviews and the changes you've made to, to, to it, you know, attack that. Uh, we all also touched on social media and how important it is uh, uh, to do that um, because like, like I said previously, customers are expecting uh, a, a quality contractor, they're well researched and, and things like uh, having a site that's compatible for mobile, uh, having ease of use on the website, mm -hmm. showing before and after pictures, these are all things we expect as a consumer. It's, it's no longer uh, you know, people that do this are standing out. So uh, in order to compete, we do have to adapt to these trends. Um, you guys, we have about five minutes left here in the meeting. So we're going to switch gears here. Um, and I'm just going to ask one final question here. If you guys can sum, sum up one piece of advice for 2021 uh, in regards to, to marketing, uh, in regards to Home Advisor, uh, and, and also just uh, to someone that's just starting out on their business. And uh, we'll go ahead, Paul, uh, take it away from here. Um, man, I said so much, I don't know what's left. <laughs> uh, I think that um, do everything to the best of your ability as a company. Um, make sure you're not letting anything fall through the cracks, any kind of, um, any portion of your company, just make sure it's 100%, 110%. Um, I think that's huge. You know, actually something new I did want to mention, uh, leave the customer with something a little bit extra. Always leave something extra. Always over deliver. Um, some, it, has to, it can be something really small. Like if you're doing a roof, put on a gutter that you see that's messed up. It's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks. Um, something extra will blow their mind. Uh, I think that's something that I can leave that is worked out for us. Um, and we've started incorporating, incorporating that a lot and people love it. They absolutely love it. Awesome. That, that was a great piece of advice. Don. I'll make mine specific to home advisor, um, focus on speed to lead. So, so, so important not just speed in calling the lead, but speed in setting the appointment. So our goal is to call leads that come in uh, in less than one minute. We're actually shooting for 30 seconds these days. And we wanna set that appointment within 48 hours. Uh, so it's, there's two aspects to speed the lead and it's calling within you know, under a minute and then setting within 48 hours. And it makes a huge difference in both your set and issue rate. So make sure your digital leads are integrated and your call center is on it all the time. It, it, it will, transform your your performance great great point uh don couldn't agree more uh seda you want to take it from here sure um I just focus on giving the client the best experience possible make sure that you over deliver and give them the project that you know that they wanted uh within budget within time with high quality Quality go, goes a long way, and I'd like to say that it makes your business somewhat of recession-proof uh, because referrals and repeat business is, um, you know, what strong companies rely on when um, times are tough. Awesome, awesome. We appreciate that point as well. And Chris, you wanna you wanna wrap it up from the from the marketing side. What Don was saying about speed delay is the key to using the 
the aggregators. Um, out of every single person who I've ever spoken with who says that it doesn't work for them, if they make some minor changes and they're contacting people in that first 30 seconds and they're setting those appointments in 24 to 72 hours, it's a game changer. Um, I think the advice that I would give to everyone coming into 2021 is look back really hard at that hunger that you had in March when you were worried that everything was going to collapse and you wouldn't have a job in a couple of months and your business might not be there in a couple of months and, and lean back into that. We learned that how much money we had still on the table in rehashes because we shut off everything, you know, for a short period of time and we're like, all right, we, just, we can't spend any money. We just have to live on what we have. What we found is we had tens of thousands of people in our databases who we simply weren't contacting anymore. And it's reasonable, right? Because lead decay is a real thing. Um, but we now implemented campaigns where for a certain time every week, we're going back and digging through those older ones, and just asking them, hey, did you get that bathroom taken care of? Did you get that basement taken care of? Um, and, and we're reigniting some of that stuff. Um, and those costs have already been accounted for in the past. So it makes your marketing budgets really great um, when you can dig up a couple of those larger ones. So just lean back into that hunger that you had in March, uh, carry that forward and everything's gonna be fine. This awesome. is the right industry to be in. Awesome, awesome, great point. And just just to add on what you were saying, um, kind of just made me think you, as far as databasing that information of the leads that you didn't win. Great, great point, Chris. And also just not giving up on a lead um, just just because you catch someone in a moment. Uh, for example, I am buying a home currently, and my realtor reached out to me a few times while I'm here during this conference. I can't answer. Uh, if she would have gave up on me, um, someone else would be winning my business, but she's going to call me uh, in about an hour and I'm going to be much more receptive. So remembering consumer behavior does play into that. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, Mike. He is much more tenured than me. Uh, I want him to just give your last piece of advice, Mike. We have 60 seconds and just close out the, the meeting for us. I would agree with a lot of what's been said here. Um, especially, you know, focusing on ratings and reviews, making sure your profile's filled out. So many companies don't take the time to do that. It definitely sets you apart. Um, and I could not agree more with the speed to lead and persistence um, from setting a database to a lot of companies I work with. They have a lot of success sending text messages out to people they don't reach. So doing those kinds of things can really lead to additional success. Awesome. Great piece of advice. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Seta, Chris, Paul, Don, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will be posting this on YouTube as well, so make sure you follow up and see it. But uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. We appreciate it, and uh, we value your partnership. So thanks for uh, being here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.